this opportunity. Um, I'm just very excited to meet with everybody here. And the first thing I would like to do is just thank Bruce Lynn for putting this together, him and his team. And, uh, two scriptures remind me of this. One is Luke 14, where Jesus talks about the banquet. And this banquet's going to be held at the end of this age when God's kingdom is on this earth. And I think it, this reminds me of all people here from 70 different nations. That's what that banquet's going to be like. And the other scripture is in Revelation where it talks about every tribe and every nation will be represented. And what's exciting to Mary and I is, is that we had the opportunity to meet people from Russia, Ukraine, Uganda, um, Philippines, and the list goes on and on. I counted 15 different countries. And what that really says to me is we're all kinfolk because we're all members of God's family. We are relatives. And in the U.S. we say, well, we're kin. And so it's just really wonderful to be here with 450 people who are brothers and sisters. Also, they're going to put some pictures up. And I want to, it illustrates keeping families together and bringing families together. And so when the first one goes up, I'll talk about it. But in the meantime, uh, let's talk about why all of us do this work. We do this work in interacting with you and some of you I knew before this evening. We have, yes, we love God, we love our neighbor. But in addition, we have this drive that was put in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that says we can't rest until we do more for the orphan. And I sense that when I talk with you, and I experience that when I work with people. And so we're unified in that motivation. That's why we do this work. This first picture is a father and his child. This father has five children, and on the fifth child, his wife dies. But the child lived, and he could not care for that child, and he brought the child to an uh, institution or an orphanage. And Bethany, through one of its partners, worked with him in this child. We provided some temporary assistance so he could get some help caring for children and was able to take that child back into his home. And I had the privilege of meeting him and talking with him. And the whole village came out and was celebrating the fact that this child returned home. The other thing I would like to share with you is that each and every one of you here is a leader. You wouldn't be here if you're a leader. And there's a lot of things to being a leader. But one thing I want to just stress is, as leaders, we need to look out in our communities and in the world and find people who are not being helped. And in our case, that's children and families. And that's our job as a leader, is to find those people and make sure they get the help or the right help that they need. The other thing, you've heard a lot about families and that it's God's plan as well as research says it's the best for children. I would like to add a third thing, and that is the children themselves tell us they want to be part of a family. And I could tell you story after story of young children, teenagers, and even early adults who say, I just want a family. And recently, a young girl who we're working with, providing life skills, job opportunities, said, I don't care if the family is black, white, brown, green, red, or purple. I just want a family. And many times, we're able to put a child who's beyond the age of adoption with a family. The child has a drive to want to belong to a family. And so as you're working, Keep that in mind. No child is too old to be put in a family. The other thing I would like to share with you is four barriers that prevent children from being part of a family. One is the lack of excellent leadership. We as leaders need to step back from our work and really assess what we're doing. Is this the best we're doing for children? What else could we do that maybe would better serve orphans? That's our responsibility as leaders. Bethany was asked to help out an organization, a Christian organization, who started foster care. 
And when we looked at that situation, what we found was that organization had good intentions. They thought they were following God's lead, but they were literally taking orphan children, placing them with families without assessing the family, without training the family, without preparing the family, and they had no casework services going into that family. Those are the kind of situations where good intentions end up doing horrible service. That's where children may get abused or neglected or suffer maltreatment because we weren't doing that excellent leadership and programming. A second barrier is the misdirection of funds. Churches, individuals, are still giving money to build institutions or orphanages. When that happens, those children that will go into those institutions are gonna live there the rest of their life. We need to prevent that kind of funding from going on. And when individuals or donors call us and say, we wanna build an orphanage, or will you take over an orphanage, we say no, and we explain what family care can do to help a child. Third barrier is the lack of a board of directors who really gets behind the work that an agency can provide. I believe that every nonprofit NGO needs a strong board of directors that not only govern the organization, not run the organization, but govern the organization. And what they need to do is make sure the organization is doing the right work. Organizations need to be transparent with their services, with their funding, and they need to allow the board member to speak into what the organization is doing. And it's a wonderful combination. The board member knows what the community needs, knows what's going on in society, and also sees what the agency is doing. And that brings about innovation to practice services. One of our former board members kept pressing me to say, what are you doing for post-adoption services? What are you doing after the child is placed, and maybe three years after the child is placed, how are you helping families? And her persistence has now has Bethany providing post-adoption therapy, education, and support groups for families throughout the United States. Lastly, it is very important and a barrier to children being in families when you don't have a national leader of a program. And by a national leader, I mean someone who's born and raised in the country where the program is going on. For example, Bethany, we do foster care in maybe 25 different sites in the United States, as well as other programming. But that doesn't mean we have the expertise to do that work in Ethiopia or China or anywhere else. And that's why we want to hire a national leader who understands the culture, understands the traditions, and can take our programming and assess it and tweak it into what will be effective in their country. I challenge all of you to hire people from the countries and when you're working with, provide them the training, and empower them to make the decisions that can make the programming excellent. There's one last picture that they're gonna put up, and this is of an older uh, young adult who is now 19. This boy, his father and mother died at different times and was put in an institution. And through the work of, of uh, our staff in Ethiopia, they found an aunt and uncle. And this young man said to us, when I lived in the institution, I had all the food I needed, I had good clothes, but I had lost all hope for my life. I didn't feel like I had a future. And when he went to his aunt and uncle's home, it all changed. Today, he lives on his own. He owns multiple apartments that he rents out for income. He has a satellite TV dish, and he charges people to come in to watch sporting events and movies. <laughs> And I talked to an elder in the community there who said, someday this young man is going to be the richest person in our community. All because an aunt and uncle took him in. So in closing, I want to thank you for what you do. 
I want to thank you for being kin to us. And what I want to do is just thank you. When, when we talk about this banquet, God in Romans 8 is really saying to us, I've adopted you and I've given you a seat at my table. And my prayer, that work that you do, will say to every orphan in this world, come and sit at the table of a family. Thank you.